So I want to show everybody what I've been working on the past uh, few weeks. This is a prototype of a section of my retro technology clock. It's um, based entirely on relay logic. Um, no semiconductors uh, involved at all. Actually, the diodes are semiconductors, but no semiconductor logic like you would expect. Um, it's based upon a ring counter, and I got the idea of the ring counter from a, a patent that's uh, 50 years old and from some Bell Labs guys. And uh, what this does, um, the ring counter consists of 10 stages, you know, from zero to nine of these pairs of relays. And these relays shift a bit subsequently from stage to stage, and they're all connected in a ring, and when it reaches the end, it goes through this red wire back up to the top. Uh, when it reaches the end, it also kicks off uh, the next digit in the sequence, and this one, again, is wired um, in a ring, but there's only six um, possible stages there because it's the because it's, it's seconds. It doesn't count up to uh, 99, it counts up to 59. Um, and so for each stage corresponds to um, a digit, uh, 0 through 9, um, you take a signal and it goes to these transistors which drive a high voltage Nixie tube. And this is going to be the display technology. This is a neon discharge uh, glow lamp. It runs off of 170 volts, which is from this um, step-up converter. Um, having a ring counter, actually I'll show you what the, how the ring counter works. This is the basic design of the ring counter. Um, this is These are relays, two relays that correspond to the two relays in each stage. Uh, there's a bit in from the previous stage and a bit out to the next stage. And if there was a if there was a, a bit here, it would turn on this relay. When the relay's on, the switches close. And so, if this relay was on, these switches would be closed. When and then, this is powered by a two-phase clock. And so, these these two lines alternate on and off, which you can see in the red here. These are the two phases of the clock. Um, when this relay is on, when the clock comes, this is on, goes through the switch that switch keeps the relay on, so then now the previous bit can go away and the relay will stay on. It also, when the switch is closed, it allows that clock signal to pass to the next stage, which will turn on this relay and close these, these switches. Um, this phase of the clock will be off, but when it switches from this phase being on to this phase being on, then through this path, this relay will be on and it will send a bit to the next stage and so on and so on. And so by doing this, subsequent pairs of relays are on in succession and it and it winds around. I tap off um, the, the green and the yellow LEDs tell me which relay is on because it's virtually impossible to know what's actually going on without seeing it happening. And then I also tap off um, a signal that drives the high voltage transistor um, to the corresponding digit in the Nixie tube. And the Nixie tube, um, made in, you know, um, Russian uh, made Nixie tubes, got the data sheet, it's in, uh, it's in Russian Cyrillic, and um, it has a, a cath uh, an anode, which is at 170 volts, and then you just tie one of the other leads um, to ground, and that creates the, the discharge. And I can show you what that looks like, let me disconnect the high voltage here. Um, this is the Nixie tube. It's kind of like a vacuum tube. Um, it has the pins on the back and it has the digits here um, and they're, they're, they're in order of visibility so, the, so they don't block each, each other. And so that plugs in to a socket. Um, these would be mounted on a front panel of the clock. Still working out the mechanical design for that. And I get 170 volts um, from this uh, boost uh, boosting converter, and you can see it's cycling through all the numbers. Now the two um, is a five upside down, and the six is a nine upside down. So they saved some um, engineering costs on the dies to make the various um, digits. Having the counters like this, it's a pretty simple exercise to make that. Uh, it's, you have to think about making it into a system, which is what I really enjoy um, as an engineer. And so, if I were to assemble this, I'd, I'd want to be able to test it, and so that's what this circuit actually does. I have an oscillator here, and you can see it blinking, you know, approximately once per second. And that goes through 
a set of uh, relays which provide the two phases of the clock. When this starts up, and I can actually I can stop the clock, this is how I can test I can stop the clock, I can manually step the count, and I can I can reset the count, and I can then load in that first bit. And so that's one of the things that you have to worry about when you when the first power is on, without these circuits, there would be no bit to start circulating. And I've built a similar circuit for the other digit. And so you can see I can count through and you can see it roll over. Some of the things I had to worry about. And if you watch, this is nine and this is one it needs to go to two zero at the same time. So when I first do the clock, this switches. It's still nine. And when I release the clock, this, this turns to zero and this turns to two at the exact same time. If some of the phases were off, I had some issues where the digits were actually were actually shift over and it wasn't uh, it wasn't synchronized. And so doing these kinds of things helps you make it into a real system. Um, and you can see my development. The first uh, prototype counter I did was, is on this breadboard. You can see I have you know, the resistors and the diodes wired, however, and, and I use these jumper wires. Um, it's not a very practical for a production uh, system. So I did a second version where I where I have nice tight wires and I've made it so that these discrete components are on top um, of the relay. And then I have the final design here where where the discrete components are sitting on the breadboard and the relay doesn't it doesn't use all the pins, it floats above it. So it makes it nice and compact and gives me lots of room to work on the design. When I actually build it, it's not going to be on a breadboard, it's going to be on a PCB <coughs> like this. And so part of the exercise, this is a, a layout that I did of, um, of one, it's like a seconds um, counter. And so it's kind of hard to see, um, you can see it better here, that these are the pairs of relays. And so I have nine pairs, then I have, sorry, ten pairs. Then I have six pairs, so this would be, you know, for a zero to 59 counter. And I did this in Illustrator, so it's good practice for learning Illustrator. And with this layout, you can see there's some gray traces, and that's going to be solder bridges on the back between all of these. And then I have another diagram which shows the connections that are between the elements, and those are going to be using wire wrap wire and and have pins and so I started to do a test layout and so this is on a smaller board but you can see I have the diodes and the resistors and the LEDs in position I haven't put on the wire wrap wires yet and then the relays just snap onto those uh, socket uh, segments in the actual design um, you know, for real life, there'll be three boards, one for hours, one for minutes, one for seconds. And so this is just the counterpart. I haven't done the layout for the display driver or for the control logic. Now to make this, um, and so then this will be in a box and there'll be a way to, to preset it. And so I was thinking of, you know, how do you generate you know the the initial clock, and you know one idea is to use a, a well, it's a, it's a synchronous motor. It's a, it's a synchronous motor. This hooks up to AC, and this turns around at one um, revolution a second. Uh, you know, um, 60 RPM. There'll be a switch here that can be just activated once a second, and that'll be used to um, to click the um, relays along. Uh, I kind of don't like the idea of having it always plugged in, you know, AC is kind of scary, and so I want it battery powered, and so, and as a conceit for setting it, um, there's a real-time clock module, this keeps track of the time, even when it's powered off, because there's a battery, and it gives a 32 kilohertz signal, which you can divide down to get uh, one pulse per second. Um, 
I, you know, I, maybe I'll do that. Um, if I really feel ambitious, there's an Arduino, and here's a GPS module, which you can use. GPS has a pulse per second out, and it also tells you um, not only your location, but your time. And so the idea is that you would boot this up, the Arduino would get the time off the GPS or off the real-time clock, and then um, it would then drive the pulse per second, which would run relay. Um, I kind of don't want to get into the software, uh, sort of hate software, but this is, I, I've designed the circuits like you have here where I can manually step it. I have also a way that a software-based processor can come in and run the clock also. So the idea is that you would, you would turn it on, it would come up, you know, zero, 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 and the processor would, would set whatever the time needed to be, and it would turn on the clock, um, supply to the initial um, seconds digit and it'll just run like a clock and it'll need no longer any um, intervention. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still kind of, I don't know, not liking the idea of writing of writing code, but I want to have the hooks in there. And so, uh, anyways, that's that's uh, what I'm working on. Uh, lots of fun. I like the clicky clack nature of it. When it rolls over, there's more going on and imagine if you're you know, rolling over to uh, to midnight, you know all the relays will cycle at once. One well, of the other things, you know, for testing, since I'm you know it takes too long, I can also speed up the rate of the clock here, and so that's you know counting faster. And with the change of capacitor, I can make it clock even faster. Um, so lots of fun, lots of detail. Um, you know, I'm actually taking notes. I'm sort of proud of myself for having uh, you know, kept a notebook and I have various circuit diagrams and some notes of, of what I'm going to be needing. So it's uh, a good engineering project, uh, lots of fun. So hopefully I'll have an update where I maybe have um, my simple prototype or maybe when I have uh, a stage by itself which has all this testability stuff on it, I can run one stage and I can uh, show you that in the future. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.